A day after Nepal tour cricketing logbooks by storming into the Asia Cup, the country still soaks in the glory of the historic achievement. The euphoria, however, will now sh slowly shift towards the country's poor infrastructure and what could have been only if the political actors had taken timely steps for the development of sports, and cricket in particular, in the country. The myopic vision of political actors can be gauged by the press release issued by Rashtriya Swatantra Party, which has advised the government to hold the Asia Cup in Nepal. Good morning, I'm Avyudeh Shrestha, and these are the headlines of the hour. It's World Press Freedom Day today. Challenges galore for Nepali press and journalists. Prime Minister Dahal pledges mass media development fund. Five Yersogumba collectors in Darchula and one in Bajang still remain missing in the separate incidents of avalanche. Identity of five missing revealed. Sudan's warring military factions announce a seven-day ceasefire beginning tomorrow. Sudan's war triggers a grave humanitarian crisis. And Delhi Capitals stun table toppers Gujarat Titans in a low-scoring thriller. Two more matches slated at the cash-rich Indian Premier League today. It's May 3rd, World Press Freedom Day today. The day is also being celebrated in Nepal with the theme, Shaping a Future of Rights, Freedom of Expression as a Driver for All Other Human Rights, and by organizing various programs related to press freedom. The Federation of Nepali Journalists organized a rally in the capital this morning on the occasion of World Press Freedom Day. The rally started from Sinamangal and ended at the Federation's office at Tilganga. Those participating in the rally urged the state and the private sector to secure press freedom in the country. World Press Freedom Day is observed on 3rd of May every year since the United Nations General Assembly embraced the day in 1993 in recognition for press freedom. According to the Federation of Nepali Journalists, the media sector in the country is facing newer challenges with every passing year. As the Working Journalist Act, formed 28 years ago, still has not been completely implemented, many journalists have been deprived from their basic and deserving remunerations. The Federation has informed that there were 55 incidents of press freedom violations last year. Meanwhile, extending his wishes on the occasion of World Press Freedom Day today, Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal assured that required laws and structure would, be, would soon be formed to ensure freedom of press and expression in the country. Premier Dahal also stated that restructuring is needed in Nepal's media sector as per the sentiment and spirit of the Constitution and the aim of Federal Democratic Republic. In the statement issued today, Prime Minister Dahal has also mentioned that efforts are being made to establish an integrated mass media development fund. Search is ongoing for the six people who had gone to collect caterpillar fungus Yashagumba and went missing after being buried in the avalanche in Darchula and Bajang yesterday. Out of the 12 people who were staying in the same tent before they were buried in the avalanche in Polinga of Vyas Rural Municipality in Dachula, seven have been rescued. According to Assistant Sub-Inspector at Sitapul Police Station, Prakash Badur Singh, those missing in the avalanche have been identified as 36-year-old Kamala Kumar and 18-year-old Prabin Kumar of Duhu Rural Municipality 4, 45-year-old Naviti Dolma Thapa, 28-year-old Ishwari Thapa, and 15-year-old Chimi Somu Thapa of Udwar Joroyal Rural Municipality 2 in Doti District. A team of 30 security personnel of Sitapul Police Station and armed police force from Changuru have been deployed in the region following the incident. Police have informed that rescue efforts have been hampered due to poor weather condition. Meanwhile, a woman from Devdi Surma of Bajang has gone missing in another avalanche in the Parthi Himal region while collecting Yashagumba. We'll take a short break here. We have more news coming up. 
Welcome back. The National Communications and Information Technology Day was marked yesterday with the theme of secure information technology, good governance and prosperity. However, the government which preaches of secure information technology itself has not been able to ensure the security of its data. The Hetora Backup Center of the state-of-the-art data bank of Singadarar is not reliable. In the competitive age of information technology, the National Information Technology Center, which operates the data center of the country itself, is not well managed, while the government has appeared indifferent in this regard. More in this report. The National Information Technology Center, established 22 years ago, has operated separate data banks in Singadarbar and Hitoda with large investments. It is the responsibility of the center to store all government data and information and formulate policies and programs for the expansion of information technology. The center under the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology has not been able to deliver to expectations. The data bank of the center was hacked on the 28th of February, following which the government websites were out of operation for up to four hours. International flights of the Tribune International Airport were affected as the website of the Department of Immigration was also out of operation. Videos and reports of significance, including those of the Federal Parliament Secretariat and the Constituent Assembly, were lost because of irresponsibility of the center. Documents of the Public Service Commission have also gone missing from the storage of the center, including data of around 60 other government offices and departments. The Disaster Recovery Center, DRC, of the Data Bank of Singadarbar is in Hidora. Considering the security aspect, each data bank has such backup systems. Service can be resumed from the DRC in Hitoda if the data center of Singadarbar faces any problem. However, the DRC established on the 14th of May 2022 has not come into full operation because of inadequate qualified human resource. Meanwhile, the recommendations furnished by the high-level committee formed to investigate into the hacking of government websites on the 28th of February have not been implemented as well. Of the 60 employees at the center, all staff except for those of the accounts department have been recruited on a contract basis. Many technicians have been quitting the center with a certificate of work experience as they do not see their future in it. In absence of a clear agreement between the center and the service providing department, both entities have been furnishing pretext and problems surface regarding access to the data center, handling of equipment and security, and privacy. It's time now for the international update. Sudan's warring military factions yesterday agreed in principle to a seven-day ceasefire from tomorrow, South Sudan announced as more airstrikes and shooting in the Khartoum region disrupted the latest short-term truce. A statement released by the Foreign Ministry of South Sudan, which had offered to mediate in the conflict, said its president, Salva Kiir, stressed the importance of a, of a longer truce and of naming envoys to peace talks to which both sides had agreed. The credibility of the reported May 4 to 11 ceasefire deal between Sudanese Army Chief General Abdel Fattah al Burhan and Par paramilitary Rapid Support Forces RSF leader General Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, also known as Hamid T, was unclear given the rampant violations that undermined previous agreements running from 24 to 72 hours. Sudan's war has forced 100,000 people to flee over its borders and fighting now its third week is creating a humanitarian crisis. The conflict risks developing into a broader disaster as Sudan's impoverished neighbors deal with a refugee crunch and fighting hampers aid deliveries in a nation where two-thirds of the people already rely on some outside assistance. We have more news coming up. Welcome back. It's time now for our segment, Public Pulse. Will you text us with your opinion? Public Pulse. Here's the question. What should be done to make Nepal cricket competitive in international tournaments? 
Your options are A, invest in infrastructure, B, encourage players, and C, government should prioritize the sport. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the weather update. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.